a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Mother Teresa Mother Teresa, known in the Catholic Church as Saint Teresa of Calcutta, was an Albanian Indian Roman Catholic nun and missionary. She was born in Skopje, then part of the Kosovo Vilayet of the Ottoman Empire. After living in Macedonia for 18 years she moved to Ireland, and then to India, where she lived for most of her life. In 1950 Teresa founded the Missionaries of Charity, a Roman Catholic religious congregation which had over 4,500 sisters and was active in 133 countries in 2012. The congregation manages homes for people dying of HIV AIDS, leprosy and tuberculosis, soup kitchens, dispensaries and mobile clinics, children's and family counseling programs, orphanages and schools. Members who take vows of chastity, poverty and obedience also profess a fourth vow, to give wholehearted free service to the poorest of the poor. Teresa received a number of honors, including the 1962 Ramon Mogsaisai Peace Prize, and 1979 Nobel Peace Prize. She was canonized on 4 September 2016, and the anniversary of her death is her feast day. A controversial figure during her life and after her death, Teresa was admired by many for her charitable work. She was praised and criticized for her opposition to abortion, and criticized for poor conditions in her houses for the dying. Her authorized biography was written by Naveen Chawla, and published in 1992, and she has been the subject of films and other books. On September 6, 2017, Teresa was named co-patron of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Calcutta, alongside St. Francis Xavier. Early Life Teresa was born Anjez Gongsi Bojaksu on 26 August 1910 into a Kosovar Albanian family in Skopje, Ottoman Empire. She was baptized in Skopje, the day after her birth. She later considered 27 August, the day she was baptized, her true birthday. She was the youngest child of Nicole and Dranifal Bojaksu. Her father, who was involved in Albanian community politics in Macedonia, died in 1919 when she was eight years old. He may have been from Prizren, Kosovo, and her mother may have been from a village near Gyarkova. According to a biography by Joan Graf Klukas, during her early years Teresa was fascinated by stories of the lives of missionaries and their service in Bengal. By age 12, she was convinced that she should commit herself to religious life. Her resolve strengthened on 15 August 1928 as she prayed at the Shrine of the Black Madonna of Vatina Letnus, where she often went on pilgrimages. Teresa left home in 1928 at age 18 to join the Sisters of Loreto at Loreto Abbey in Rathfarnham, Ireland, to learn English with the view of becoming a missionary. English was the language of instruction of the Sisters of Loreto in India. She never saw her mother or her sister again. Her family lived in Skopje until 1934, when they moved to Tirana. She arrived in India in 1929 and began her novitiate in Darjeeling, in the Lower Himalayas, where she learned Bengali and taught at St. Teresa's school near her convent. Teresa took her first religious vows on 24 May 1931. She chose to be named after Therese de Lisieux the patron saint of missionaries, because a nun in the convent had already chosen that name. Agnes opted for its Spanish spelling. Teresa took her solemn vows on 14 May 1937 while she was a teacher at the Loreto Convent School in Antali, Eastern Calcutta. She served there for nearly 20 years and was appointed its headmistress in 1944. Although Teresa enjoyed teaching at the school, she was increasingly disturbed by the poverty surrounding her in Calcutta. The Bengal famine of 1943 brought misery and death to the city, and the August 1946 Direct Action Day began a period of Muslim-Hindu violence. Missionaries of Charity On 10 September 1946, Teresa experienced what she later described as, the call within the call, when she travelled by train, to the Loreto convent in Darjeeling from Calcutta for her annual retreat. I was to leave the convent and help the poor while living among them. It was an order. To fail would have been to break the faith. Joseph Langford later wrote, though no one knew it at the time. Sister Teresa had just become Mother Teresa. She began missionary work with the poor in 1948, replacing her traditional Loretto habit with a simple white cotton sari with a blue border. 
Teresa adopted Indian citizenship, spent several months in Patna to receive basic medical training, at Holy Family Hospital and ventured into the slums. She founded a school in Matijal, Kolkata, before she began tending to the poor and hungry. At the beginning of 1949 Teresa was joined in her effort by a group of young women, and she laid the foundation for a new religious community helping the poorest among the poor. Her efforts quickly caught the attention of Indian officials, including the Prime Minister. Teresa wrote in her diary that her first year was fraught with difficulty. With no income, she begged for food and supplies and experienced doubt, loneliness and the temptation to return to the comfort of convent life. During these early months, on 7 October 1950, Teresa received Vatican permission for the diocesan congregation which would become the missionaries of charity. In her words, it would care for the hungry, the naked, the homeless, the crippled, the blind, the lepers, all those people who feel unwanted, unloved, uncared for throughout society, people that have become a burden to the society and are shunned by everyone. By 1997 the 13 member Calcutta congregation had grown to more than 4,000 sisters who managed orphanages. AIDS hospices and charity centers worldwide, caring for refugees, the blind, disabled, aged, alcoholics, the poor and homeless, and victims of floods, epidemics and famine. In 1952, Teresa opened her first hospice with help from Calcutta officials. She converted an abandoned Hindu temple into the Kalighat home for the dying, free for the poor, and renamed it Kalighat, the home of the pure heart. Those brought to the home received medical attention and the opportunity to die with dignity in accordance with their faith. Muslims were read the Quran, Hindus received water from the Ganges, and Catholics received extreme unction. A beautiful death, Teresa said, is for people who lived like animals to die like angels, loved and wanted. She opened a hospice for those with leprosy, calling it Shanti Nagar. The missionaries of charity established leprosy outreach clinics throughout Calcutta providing medication, dressings, and food. The missionaries of charity took in an increasing number of homeless children. In 1955 Dariz opened Shishu Bhavan, the children's home of the Immaculate Heart, as a haven for orphans and homeless youth. The congregation began to attract recruits and donations, and by the 1960s it had opened hospices, orphanages and leper houses throughout India. Teresa then expanded the congregation abroad, opening a house in Venezuela in 1965 with five sisters. Houses followed in Italy, Tanzania and Austria in 1968, and, during the 1970s the congregation opened houses and foundations in the United States and dozens of countries in Asia, Africa, and Europe. The Missionaries of Charity Brothers was founded in 1963, and a contemplative branch of the sisters followed in 1976. Lay Catholics and non-Catholics were enrolled in the co-workers of Mother Teresa, the sick and suffering company workers, and the lay missionaries of charity, responding to requests by many priests. In 1981 Mother Teresa founded the Corpus Christi movement for priests and the missionaries of charity fathers in 1984 to combine the vocational aims of the missionaries of charity with the resources of the priesthood. By 2007 the missionaries of charity numbered about 450 brothers and 5,000 sisters worldwide, operating 600 missions, schools, and shelters in 120 countries. International Charity Teresa said, by blood, I am Albanian. By citizenship, an Indian. By faith, I am a Catholic nun. As to my calling, I belong to the world. As to my heart, I belong entirely to the heart of Jesus. Fluent in five languages Bengali, Albanian, Serbian, English, and Hindi she made occasional trips outside India for humanitarian reasons. In 1982, at the height of the siege of Beirut, Teresa rescued 37 children trapped in a front-line hospital by brokering a temporary ceasefire between the Israeli army and Palestinian guerrillas. Accompanied by Red Cross workers, she traveled through the war zone to the hospital to evacuate the young patients. When Eastern Europe experienced increased openness in the late 1980s, Teresa expanded her efforts to communist countries which had rejected the missionaries of charity. She began dozens of projects, undeterred by criticism of her stands against abortion and divorce. No matter who says what, you should accept it with a smile and your own work. 
She visited Armenia after the 1988 earthquake and met with Nikolai Ryzkov, chairman of the Council of Ministers. Teresa traveled to assist the hungry in Ethiopia, radiation victims at Chernobyl and earthquake victims in Armenia. In 1991 she returned to Albania, for the first time, opening a Missionaries of Charity Brothers home in Tirana. By 1996, Teresa operated 517 missions in over 100 countries. Her Missionaries of Charity grew from 12 to thousands, serving the poorest of the poor in 450 centers worldwide. The first Missionaries of Charity home in the United States was established in the South Bronx area of New York City, and, by 1984 the congregation operated 19 establishments throughout the country. Declining Health and Death Teresa had a heart attack in Rome in 1983 while she was visiting Pope John Paul II. Following a second attack in 1989, she received an artificial pacemaker. In 1991, after a bout of pneumonia in Mexico, she had additional heart problems. Although Teresa offered to resign as head of the Missionaries of Charity, in a secret ballot the sisters of the congregation voted for her to stay and she agreed to continue. In April 1996 she fell, breaking her collarbone, and four months later she had malaria and heart failure. Although Teresa had heart surgery, her health was clearly declining. According to Archbishop of Calcutta Henry Sebastian de Souza, he ordered a priest to perform an exorcism when she was first hospitalized with cardiac problems, because he thought she might be under attack by the devil. On 13 March 1997 Therese resigned as head of the Missionaries of Charity, and she died on 5 September. At the time of her death, the Missionaries of Charity had over 4,000 sisters and an associated brotherhood of 300 members operating 610 missions in 123 countries. These included hospices and homes for people with HIV-AIDS, leprosy and tuberculosis, soup kitchens, children's and family counseling programs, orphanages and schools. The missionaries of charity were aided by co-workers numbering over one million by the 1990s. Teresa lay in repose in St. Thomas, Calcutta, for a week before her funeral. She received a state funeral from the Indian government in gratitude for her service to the poor of all religions in the country. Teresa's death was mourned in the secular and religious communities. Prime Minister of Pakistan Nawaz Sharif called her a rare and unique individual who lived long for higher purposes. Her lifelong devotion to the care of the poor, the sick, and the disadvantaged was one of the highest examples of service to our humanity. According to former UN Secretary General Javier Perez de Quella, she is the United Nations. She is peace in the world. India Teresa was first recognized by the Indian government more than a third of a century earlier, receiving the Padma Shri in 1962 and the Awahalal Nehru Award for International Understanding in 1969. She later received other Indian awards, including the Bharat Ratna in 1980. Teresa's official biography, by Naveen Chawla, was published in 1992. In Kolkata, she is worshipped as a goddess by some Hindus. To commemorate the 100th anniversary of her birth, the government of India issued a special five coin on 28 August 2010. President Pratibha Patil said, clad in a white sari with a blue border. She and the Sisters of Missionaries of Charity became a symbol of hope. To many the aged, the destitute, the unemployed, the diseased, the terminally ill, and those abandoned by their families. Indian views of Teresa are not uniformly favorable. Arup Chatterjee, a physician born and raised in Calcutta who was an activist in the city's slums for years around 1980 before moving to the UK, said that he never even saw any nuns in those slums. His research, involving more than 100 interviews with volunteers, nuns and others familiar with the missionaries of charity, was described in a 2003 book critical of Teresa. Chatterjee criticized her for promoting a cult of suffering and a distorted, negative image of Calcutta, exaggerating work done by her mission and misusing funds and privileges at her disposal. According to him, some of the hygiene problems he had criticized improved after Teresa's death in 1997. Bikash Ranjan Bhattacharya, mayor of Kolkata, from 2005 to 2010, said that she had no significant impact on the poor of this city, glorified illness instead of treating it. 
and misrepresented the city. No doubt there was poverty in Calcutta, but it was never a city of lepers and beggars, as Mother Teresa presented it. On the Hindu right, the Bharatiya Janata Party clashed with Teresa over the Christian Dalits, but praised her in death and sent a representative to her funeral. Vishwa Hindu Parishad, however, opposed the government decision to grant her a state funeral. Secretary Gur Iraj Kishore said that her first duty was to the church and social service was incidental, accusing her of favoring Christians and conducting secret baptisms of the dying in a front page tribute. The Indian fortnightly frontline dismissed the charges as patently false and said that they had made no impact on the public perception of her work, especially in Calcutta, praising her selfless caring, energy and bravery. The author of the tribute criticized Teresa's public campaign against abortion and her claim to be non-political. In February 2015 Mohan Bhagwat, leader of the Hindu right-wing organization Rashtriya Swayam Sivak Sang, said that Teresa's objective was to convert the person who was being served into a Christian. Former RSS spokesperson M.G. Vaidya supported Bhagwat's assessment, and the organization accused the media of distorting facts about Bhagwat's remarks. Trinamool Congress MP Derek O'Brien, CPI leader at Ulanjan, and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Keriwal protested Bhagwat's statement. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?